Hi, my name is Ashley Colmsey and this is how you can rickroll people with Power Apps. So although there are really about four parts to the app, it's created with only two screens. So instead of having four different screens for each separate part of the app, we've decided to use two screens, intro screen and app body, and then three canvases. So that's camera canvas, loading canvas and results canvas. The reason for this is that by using canvases, even when you're in this edit mode here, the user can't see the rickroll until you've gone through the app itself. If we had done it with separate screens instead of canvases, you'd be able to go onto the screen and see the video and that would kind of ruin the joke a bit. So we're just going to make a new blank app and I've done it with a phone layout. You could use a tablet layout or anything you wanted, but I just decided to go for phone because it's easier um, to show people on my phone. First thing that we're going to do is create our two screens. So we're going to add another blank screen here. Okay, so as you can see, I've just renamed them intro screen and app body. We're going to work on intro screen first. It's the first screen that people will see when they open your app. This is where you want to put your gimmick. We called ours Guess Your IQ. To make the app look more legitimate, I um, uploaded some images to use them in the background. So I just went into media to put them in all you do insert media so I'll put the circle in first it was quarter circle and then I also had my thinking person we decided to put a little description in the middle Okay, so the most important things to add to this screen is a little label saying insert name, a text input box underneath, which we have changed the default value to just nothing. So it's just two quotation marks. And then we've put an arrow at the bottom. We want to make it so that you cannot progress onto the next screen until you have put your name in the box. Um, because this is an arrow and not a button, you can't disable it or enable it. But what you can do is set the visible property. So we've set the visible property to text input one, which is that box there, as you can see, it highlights it, dot text. So we're saying we want the text in that box does not equal. So if we test that out now, that just means the moment I type something in, the arrow appears and that's what we want. If there's nothing in the box, there's no and we're just going to set the arrow to navigate to the next screen. So we've got arrow one there. So we're going to do on select. It's just going to say navigate to app body. Um, you have to choose a transition. So we're going to say screen transition is none. That's all we want. So now if we go into the app body, in the app body, we need to be able to number one, take a photo with the camera. We then want the camera to disappear and to have a sort of loading screen. Once we've had the loading screen, then we want to get the results, which is going to be the rickroll. So those are three different things. We're gonna need three canvases. Now, currently the only way to get a canvas is to go and add a new scrollable screen. This here, as you can see, we then get a canvas. So we're just gonna copy and paste that onto our app body screen. So we can get rid of that scrollable screen that we added. We don't need that. We just need it at the canvas. Copy and paste a few more of them. I'm going to rename them to camera canvas, loading canvas, and results canvas. We want them to be covering the whole screen. So on the camera canvas, to add controls to a canvas, you need to select the data card and make sure you are in the data card. If you're not in the data card, when you try to add a control, for example, if I tried to add a button, as you can see, it's not actually in the canvas itself, it's just on top. Whereas, when you go in the data card and add a control, as you can see, it's in the data card. And so you want to make sure that every time you add something to a canvas, it's in the data card. Now we are going to place an add picture control. This is like a camera control, but instead of just using the Power Apps camera, it actually uses your device's local camera. So it can allow for better photos, you can you have front camera and back camera support and you can also select from saved photos, which is really helpful. 
The Add Media Control has two sections to it. If you select the Uploaded Image section, this background looks a bit boring, just for aesthetic reasons, we're going to change that background. So the next important thing is to add a button control. Because we are not saving the picture anywhere, we don't need to link it to this control. We're also going to change the on select property. We want to create a context variable. So we're going to write update context. And we're going to say this variable that we are creating is going to be called button pressed. We're going to say button pressed is true. And this is going to be a part of how we change between the canvases and also how we determine when certain things start or finish. For working purposes, we're going to go back to that canvas, just turn the visibility to off. So on the loading canvas, what we're going to do, make sure in the data card, insert a timer control. Doesn't matter where you put it because we're going to be making it invisible in a second. So we're going to just make the duration 10,000, which will be 10 seconds. We're going to make the start when button press is true. When the timer ends, we want another variable to be changed. So on timer end, we're going to update context. And the variable that we're going to make is called timer finished. So now we're going to set the timer visibility to off because we don't want to see that. Now to make it look like it is loading, we're going to insert a pie chart. We don't want the legend, so we can just delete that. We don't want the title, so we can delete that too. Show labels is going to be off. The items, this pie chart is going to be made up of two sections. One section is going to be white, which is the background colour, and the other section is going to be blue. As the blue grows and the white shrinks, it gives the illusion of a loading symbol. We want to create a table with two. Really, the labels don't matter at all because we're not going to see any of it, but you just want to make sure that the second one is going to be equal to our timer. We need another one, and this is going to be 10,000, which was our duration of the timer take timer value. As one increases, the other will decrease at the same rate. To make sure we've got the right colours, this is a really big colour set. We don't need that many colours. We are only going to use two colours. First colour can be whatever you want it to be. I'm doing a nice blue. The second colour has to be white or whatever colour your background is. And so at the moment you can see it just looks like nothing. And we also want to make sure that we don't have a border. So just double check that by going into border style and we're going to say border style none. While we're working I'm just going to change the white to red just so that we can see what's going on. Next thing we're going to do is insert a circle over the top. And the circle is going to be our background colour which is white. So now it looks like we've got our loading symbol. Now that we've got all that sorted, we can change the colour back to white. There were also words appearing underneath it as it loaded, so to do that, we just add a label. The text is the interesting part of this label, because you do not just have one set text. We had a lot of different things that kind of cycled through. To do that, the text is going to be an IF statement. So if the value of the timer is less than 2000, I want the text to say analyzing your image. If the timer value is less than 4000, I want it to say building vectors. I'm sure you can see where we're going with this one. If the timer value is less than 6000, and lastly, if it's less than 10,000, we want it to say building random forest. If you want it to change more regularly, just change the gaps, just change the numbers here. You can have more than this, you can have less than this, it doesn't matter, just decide at what point you want it to change what it says. Okay, so that's all we really need to do for the loading canvas. Again, we're just going to set this value to invisible for now, but there is one more thing we just need to go back quickly to the camera canvas, and we need to go to the button control. Now we also want to reset the timer when we click the button because otherwise if someone goes all the way through the app and then wants to redo it again, the timer value will be stuck on whatever it was last time and it won't work properly. So we're going to make the timer reset. 
that's all we need to do there. So now we've done two of three canvases, the last canvas is the results canvas. And all we're going to do is insert a video control. In media, you just type in the name of your video. Mine here was re so never going to give you up. And I'm making it full screen so that we get all of the goodness of Rick Astley. Show controls, false. We also want to make it so that you cannot click to pause the video. We're going to put display mode as view. We're going to insert a timer control. Again, it's going to be invisible, doesn't matter where it is. Duration is going to be 20,000. Visibility is going to be false. We also want on timer end. We're going to do another variable. Update context, we're going to make a new one called timer to finished. I'm going to say true. So we want the timer here to start when the other timer has finished. So we're going to set start as timer one has finished. Okay, we're then going to add a button control. Uh, we want on select to exit. So that exits the app. We don't want the user to log out, so we'll put false here. Visible, we're going to set it to say that it's only visible when timer two has finished. Now we've got all our canvases here. We're going to work out the visibility of the canvases. Camera canvas, right now it's just invisible. What we want is we want it to be visible only when two things have happened. So we want to say the button has not been pressed and the timer has not finished. Loading canvas, if the button has been pressed, but if the timer has not finished. And the last canvas is going to be visible when the button has been pressed and the timer has finished. So that is how you can rickroll people using Power Apps.